Hello and welcome to this first Max tutorial which will cover some basics about this plugin. The Max is a modular environment where you can load any kind of VST plugins, you can use the internal modules which it delivers, you can use it as an instrument, you can use it as a sampler, you can use it as an audio effect. It's uh, quite capable of some things. I already loaded here a basic patch which comes with a factory library called Basic Synth. By opening its user interface it shows you first the so-called play editor. This play editor is the place where you can set up your own user interface for the preset you create or change existing ones. You can, for example, make links to complete modules, like here with the oscillator. You can open with one click the complete edit page of the oscillator available, where you can change the volume, you can change the waveform, you use uh, the pitch of uh, the oscillator and uh, quite a few things more. You can set up and control from this page any parameter which is available for automation inside the whole MUX. One great part about this program is that you can go as deep as you like. So you can load a MUX into a MUX into a MUX into a MUX as far as you like. And you will always have access from this play editor to every part in this preset you made. So the basic elements of this top part here are first the processing switch. So here you can turn the complete processing on and off. You have a preset selector. By clicking on this text box you can open an internal file list where all the factory patches or uh, presets are available, categorized in effects and instrument and subcategorized. You have here a user library. This is a place where you store your, your presets uh, yourself. When you save any patch in the MUX, it will be stored in this user library, not in the factory part. The arrows to the left and to the right allow you to step through the available presets. The open preset button does nearly the same like this text box. By clicking on this button you get uh, this file list but here in a separate file browser window which allows you to navigate through your complete file system to locate presets or whatever. You can set up your own favorite uh, places where you can quick jump to, you can make new folders for example. The save preset button will save the changes you have made to existing preset or if you build up one from scratch you can save this preset if you want to have more detailed access to the saving process you choose save preset as which will open the same file browser but it says now save as where you can locate the place where you want to save this preset you can uh, give a new file name if you want to just change an existing file name just click on it and say new file and then it's already named for you so you can make any changes to the name this little number box here is a pitch selector which will in real time change the incoming notes and uh, pitch them up or down respecting to the settings here you've got. For example, if I hit the middle C on my keyboard, you have this pitch. If I, for example, go to minus 12 and hit the same key, it plays one octave lower. This next button we cover in a moment, but first we go to this option list where you have some additional options. One really helpful 
entry in this option list could be this revert preset which reloads the last loaded preset when you have made any changes to the parameters and you want to go back and cannot remember the values they had before just go to this revert preset so for example if i set now this to different values and i'm not happy with it and want to go back and i cannot remember these i don't have to go to the file list and and load this preset from the file list again i just go here to revert preset and now it reverts to the previous settings the next button we have to cover is this show play deep editor from the play editor if you hit this little button here it shows the deep editor the deep editor is a real modular area where you can connect everything where you can load everything up the deep editor on the top looks the same like the play editor you get the same buttons the same boxes but it differs from this part on here you have access to a so-called meter parameters these meter parameters are quick controls where you can set up several parameters from the contained modules you can drop a module on this parameter to set it up you can go to this edit entry in the right click uh, context menu when you call it up it opens this little window where it says its name double click on the entry will lead you to the mapping window where you can set up the target module this list contains every module which are available in this current state of the max from these meter parameters are 16 available which you can reach with these little arrows here if you make this editor window even bigger you can see more at a time and if it's a little bit smaller like this just go through them with those arrows okay let's talk about the modular area here this is a place where the fun really starts by right clicking in the empty space and choose the entry add module you get a list of available modules which you can add you get complete presets of the factory or of the user library you can choose any VSD effects or instruments you can choose rewire devices if any or internal modules to delete a module just select the one and hit delete on your keyboard here you can confirm if you want to delete it or not I choose no for the moment you can right click a module to reach further options like renaming, cut and copy, paste and many more like you can see here the signal flow in each MUX, no matter if instrument or effect, goes from the input always to the output. You can set up your modules from left to right or from bottom to top or like you see in the most patches from the top to the bottom. But the signal flow always stays the same. If the signal passes through from the input to the output. There are three types of signals audio signals always colored in red events blue colored and modulation data in this light green color here at the modules the in and outputs are always reflected by those little triangles in the max they're shown as modules audio inputs and outputs events in and outs modulation in and outs by right clicking the empty space Add module and navigating through the module list to the section inputs outputs you can add as many of these modules as you need. Edit in or outputs are always reflected by additional triangles at the modules. You can see it here. There's a second output now because I added a second output module in the MUX and removing these modules will remove this little triangle too. Connecting the in and outputs is a quite easy task. Just grab the little triangle of an output and drag it to the input triangle of the wished module. 
but you can only connect equal colored in and outs blue to blue, green to green, red to red and you can only connect an output to an input. You cannot connect an input to an input when you want to try it here. The input to the input, it will automatically jump to the output. A second method to make a connection is to drag the wire directly onto the module. If there's only one matching jack available, like here, it will connect automatically. If there are more jacks available, like on the second example here, you get a little context box where you can choose from the available ones. To delete the cable, just select it by left-clicking and hit delete on your keyboard. By double-clicking on the cable, you get a property window, which uh, differs a little bit depending on which cable you uh, made the double click. The same on an audio cable, you get some options more. You can have access to the same options we spoke about by right-clicking a cable and choose either properties or delete. Let's see what happens here. In this polysynth, I set up the most basic patch, which is necessary to make some useful noise in the mux. Playing a note sounds like this. Now I play the same note and then I add another one. Both notes fade nicely in and out. Now let's try the same in the MAX itself. Instead of inside the polysynth, I copy the same oscillator and envelope uh, with the same settings into the MAX. Now we make the connections which are necessary to get the sound out of this. Holding down a note sounds the same. Now I try to add the second note. I hope you can hear what happens. Instead of adding the second note, the first one was cut and only the second one was playing, but without any release phase like we had before. This means the MAX is only monophone playable, means it can only play one note at a time. To be able to play polyphone patches, you have to insert oscillators and envelopes in the polysynth. And this is a reason why you perhaps have noticed this before. These two, the MAX and the polysynth, have different context menus if you want to add a module. So right-clicking, add a module, you get a whole bunch of options in the MAX and compared to the options of the polysynth, the list of the MAX is much, much bigger. In the polysynth, there are only modules available which are polyform playable. You don't have access here to any presets or effects or ESD plugins or even the list of internal module is much bigger in the MUX than in the polysynth. But don't worry, even if you can insert VSD instruments only in the monophone MUX, you can of course play them in a polyform way. The polyphony happens always in the VST plugin, not in the MAX. We will look at that later. That's about the basics of the MAX and I hope you enjoyed this little journey. In the next videos we will take a closer look into all the available modules, their parameters and of course how to use them and the whole MAX in many many examples. Thanks for watching and see you soon!